In this discussion, we will discuss the discussion question of Describe the process for a partner withdrawing from a partnership. So if a, if a partner leaves the partnership, there's a couple different care types of ways that can happen. We're going to have to pay off uh, the partner that leaves and then the, the partner leaves the partnership. So when that happens, then the question is how much, how much are we going to pay the partner that leaves and how are we going to record that typically? And when, when the partner is going to leave, we're going to, we're going to look at the capital accounts and if there's going to be an agreement between the partners to pay out the partner who's going to leave the partnership. And that, that agreement may or may not coincide with the net value of the capital accounts. In other words, the assets minus the liabilities is the equity, the partner's equity. And the partner's equity is broken out between however many partners are there. So you would think then that whatever the partner's equity account is, we would then pay that partner cash equivalent to the equity account and then just remove the partner. That would be the most simple transaction, at least transaction wise, to uh, remove the partner. Note also that you know gen a general partnership, if someone leaves the partnership, typically we'll have, you know, in essence, in general, we kind of the partnership has has died, and, and then we basically remake the partnership. It's so so anytime there's a change in partnership, uh, technically the partnership kind of closes, and then and then we can start basically the new partnership uh, for that. But in any case, the capital account would go uh, down. So if we got cash, we would debit cash, and then we would credit. Uh, sorry, <laughs> we would credit cash to pay the partnership from the partnership making cash go down and then we would debit the partner's capital account and bring their capital account down to zero and that would eliminate the partner. That would be like the most easy kind of transaction we can have. Now that doesn't always happen however we don't always you know a partner doesn't always leave for the exact value of the partnership of their partnership interest and if if they get let's say the partner leaves and the partners are gonna pay them more than the value of their net partnership interest. And you might say, well, why would that happen? Why would the partnership pay more to a leaving partner than uh, their capital account value? And there could be a couple different reasons. One might just be that the, that the partnership is actually valued higher than what their book value is because of something like intangible assets. Maybe uh, the, the, the value, maybe there's something like goodwill in the partnership and therefore the partnership is really uh, thought of to be a higher value than just the net, net assets of the partnership and therefore it would make sense to pay one partner more or possibly you know <laughs> they really they actually want the partner to leave maybe maybe the partners the remaining partners actually you know would prefer or think they can do better business or want to take a, the business in a different direction and are willing to, to pay more to um, to remove the partner who wants to go in a different direction and maybe that's just the best thing to do so whatever the reason is, it could quite happen. It could quite possibly be that way. If that were to be the case, then we would credit cash for you know whatever we paid, the higher amount than the partnership interest. We would debit the partnership capital account to take that partner off the books. And then, of course, we would have the difference between the cash we, we paid and the uh, one partner leaving uh, the books and the other two partners or whoever however many partners what there are would then kind of have to reduce their capital accounts for that difference meaning we paid more cash we had a, a higher credit than the debit to the capital accounts there's going to be debits left over that we will have to allocate and we're going to have to allocate that typically in accordance with the profit sharing to the other two partners so in essence uh, the, the other two partners have a transaction where they basically had you know a loss right they they bought you know they kind of the partnership bought back the partnership interest for uh, more cash than the value of the partnership interest and we don't record that loss on the income statement because the partnership didn't have a loss uh, you know in its generation in its, in its normal business activities the partners with had a loss in in uh, the sale of the partnership interest, the, the, the terminating of the partnership interest. So we're going to lower their capital accounts re representing the fact that the business owes them uh, less money or the partnership owes them less money. Now it could be the reverse could happen. Let's say that the leaving partner is now going to get paid more um, or, or less. We're going we're to pay the leaving partner less 
than his capital account balance. And you might say, well, why would that happen? Why would the leaving partner accept less money than you know, the capital account balance? And, and it could be that one reason might be that the, the value of our assets minus our liabilities is not correctly stated in some way, meaning, for example, we might have assets on the books that uh, are, on a, are on, a, on a depreciable basis, which we may think that, um, that they're not reflected correctly. The assets may have a lesser value in them than what's on the books for. So we may, so that might be a reason why we would, we, with the leaving partner, we would pay less to the leaving partner. It also could be that, you know, the leaving partner's leaving. <laughs> so it might be that they have, you know, they want to go somewhere and, uh, and they're straining the partnership in that way and they might accept less money in order to do whatever they got to do uh, within that. So the partners may, may end up within this negotiation process paying less than the capital account balance in the partnership. So if that happens, then we're going to credit cash, still reducing cash for whatever we pay. We're going to debit the capital account for whatever the capital account is to make it go down to zero. And we're going to have credits left over that we're going to have to then credit to the partners that uh, are remaining. So, which is good for the partners remaining. So, in other words, the partners remaining are going to increase their capital accounts in accordance with the profit sharing agreement uh, by the by this excess that we had uh, for the excess in the capital account value over the amount of cash we sold. So it's kind of like the partners have a gain here. There's kind of like a gain on this transaction. The gain doesn't go on the income statement for the same reason because the partnership didn't have a gain in their business operations. The partners had a gain in the selling of the partnership interest.